In 1972, tragedy struck a Yugoslavian plane as a bomb in a briefcase exploded, ejecting 23 passengers and four crew members from the aircraft. The chances of survival seemed non-existent, yet amid the chaos, one person emerged alive, 22-year-old flight attendant Vesna Volobic. She fell a staggering 33,333 feet what truly makes her survival extraordinary are the unlikely factors that came into play. It's well worth watching this extraordinary true story to the end to get an overview of what actually happened. Vesna Vlovic, born on January 3, 1950, in Belgrade, Serbia, fueled by her love for the Beatles, she traveled to London to attend one of the universities. While there, she had a chance encounter with a friend who was wearing a flight attendant's uniform. She then instantly knew that she wanted to also be a flight attendant, which led her to join JAT, the Yugoslavia's flagship airline, in 1971. On January 26, 1972, JAT Flight 367 had two scheduled stopovers in between Stockholm in Sweden and Belgrade in Serbia. First stopover was Copenhagen in Denmark, which is where the secondary cabin crew, including Vesna, boarded the plane and the other stopover before Belgrade was Zagreb, Croatia, which they never reached. As fate would have it, Vesna Volovic was not originally assigned to be working on Flight 367, as she disclosed in a 2002 interview with Greenlight. Jat, the airline, had mistakenly identified her with another flight attendant, also named Vesna. Now here's two contrasting thoughts. Vesna Volovic faced an unfortunate situation by filling in for another flight attendant with the same name, but she was incredibly lucky to survive. At the same time, the Vesna who was originally scheduled for the flight had an extraordinary stroke of luck by not being on board. This mix-up will undoubtedly be a memorable part of both their lives, likely staying with them forever. Standing by the window of the airport terminal, the eager crew of the next flight eagerly observed the arrival of Flight 367. Little did they know that this very plane would not make it to the final destination. Among the crew is Vesna Volovic, a striking air hostess. Her eyes fixed on the passengers disembarking. Patiently awaiting the emptying of the plane, she anticipates boarding with her fellow crew members and passengers. Vesna and others notices a particular passenger engaged in a heated argument with airport staff. Dismissing it as a commonplace occurrence, she pays it no further attention. Little does she know that this seemingly inconsequential tantrum will in a matter of hours dictate the destiny of every soul on board. As this very man was likely to be the bomber, he was supposed to continue on with this flight, but pretended to be angry with the airport staff and never reported the flight. Unfortunately, there was no evidence to convict him. Once the passengers boarded the plane, around 3 p.m. JAT Flight 367 takes off from Copenhagen Airport. Following its flight path, the plane ascends smoothly to its planned cruising height of 33,000 feet. In the cabin, the crew initiates in-flight drink and food services, creating an atmosphere of relaxed enjoyment among the passengers. At the rear of the aircraft, Vesna diligently serves food and drink with her food trolley, blissfully ignorant of the impending catastrophe. Meanwhile, in the cockpit, the captain and co-pilot engage in a discussion about the weather and flight path. Approximately 45 minutes after takeoff, the aircraft soars over the border between East Germany and Czechoslovakia. Abruptly, a cataclysmic explosion rocks the plane, tearing it into three parts mid-air. The force of the explosion propels the plane's parts into a rapid descent, and the sudden decompression causes passengers and crew members to be violently expelled from the plane, hurtling towards the ground. In a twist of fate, Vesna stationed at the back with her food trolley, finds herself fortuitously wedged against the plane's rear wall, the pressure of the food trolley acting as an improvised seatbelt. Just a quick interruption, I would be extremely grateful, more than you will ever know. If you could spare a moment to pause this video to like and subscribe, if you haven't done so already, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Continuing on, as the shattered remnants of the plane plummet, the nearby Czechoslovakian town of Sarabska witnesses a surreal spectacle of burning debris and lifeless bodies. 
Amidst the despair, Vesna was found screaming inside the wreckage by Bruno Honk, a local villager and former World War II medic who was able to administer vital first aid before rescuers arrived. Although Vesna survived, she sustained extremely serious injuries and spent the following days in a coma. She fractured her skull and suffered a cerebral hemorrhage. She also suffered two broken legs and three broken vertebrae, one of which was crushed completely. Her pelvis was fractured and several ribs broken. Her injuries resulted in her being temporarily paralyzed below the waist. She had total amnesia. The last thing that Vesna could remember from before the crash was greeting passengers as they boarded. The next thing she remembered was seeing her parents in her hospital room about one month later. Amazingly, Vesna was able to walk again after 10 months, with a permanent limp due to the twisting of her spine. Her parents had to sell a lot of their possessions to pay for a medical treatment, and they both died in the next few years. She blamed stress placed upon them as a factor in their untimely deaths. As Vesna had no memory of the crash, she was perfectly happy to resume her duties as a flight attendant. But because she had become a national hero in Yugoslavia, the airline did not want her flying for fear her presence would make other travelers anxious. Instead, she was given a desk job. As part of the Guinness World Records Hall of Fame ceremony in 1985, Paul McCartney presented Vesna with a certificate and medal for achieving the highest fall survived without a parachute. Vesna and her friends grew up in Yugoslavia listening to the Beatles, so this was an extra special moment for her. Air safety investigators attributed Vesna's survival to her being trapped by a food trolley in the fuselage as it broke away from the rest of the aircraft and plummeted towards the ground. When the cabin depressurized, the passengers and other flight crew were blown out of the aircraft and fell to their deaths. Investigators believed that the fuselage with Vesna pinned inside landed at an angle in a heavily wooded and snow-covered mountainside, which cushioned the impact. Her physicians concluded that her history of low blood pressure caused her to pass out quickly after the cabin depressurized and kept her heart from bursting on impact. On the basis of her conversations with Bruno the man that first helped her at the crash site, Vesna disputed the fact that she was discovered in the rear section of the plane, as claimed in some reports. The man who found me told me that I was in the middle part of the plane, she said. I was found with my head down and my colleague on top of me. One part of my body with my leg was in the plane and my head was out of the plane. A catering trolley was pinned against my spine and kept me in the plane. In her later years, Vesna herself suffered from depression thinking about the crash. She said, whenever I think of the accident, I have a prevailing grave feeling of guilt for surviving. Then I think maybe I should not have survived at all. Everybody thinks I am lucky, but they are mistaken. If I were lucky, I would never have had this accident she said. In December 2016, Vesna died alone at home of a suspected heart failure. She was only 66 years old. But let's not forget the 27 people who lost their lives. They were someone's family members, someone's friends. Their lives were cut short. It's such a sad, tragic story. If this true story gave you any value at all, please like and subscribe. Until the next time, bye for now.